This is a lesson for the sociology of education. We're looking at ethnicity and educational attainment, part one. So the factors that connect these two things, these things are correlated. Ethnicity and educational attainment are correlated, not necessarily directly um, causational. Yeah. Of course, on the data, I understand some of the implications. Ethnic minority, Chinese, Indian, Pakistani, Bengali, Caribbean, gender, poverty, material deprivation. We don't say poor, we say material deprivation. My previous lesson on setting and streaming. Read the questions, don't have the answer. Look at the videos. Right, okay, let's think about some basic stats first. Here are some stats. This is from 2016 GCSE results. National average was 57.5% of kids got five ASRs of C, including English and Maths. You can see kids from a Chinese background in this country were the highest performing groups, followed just about by some Indian kids. FSM is free school meals, so Chinese kids who didn't get non free school meals, did not get free school meals, 77.7, .7. highest performing group, Indians, non free school meals, 73.2, white British, non free school meals, so this is 63.6%. That's the largest group in the whole country. Yeah. British non free school meal. Towards the bottom, Black Caribbean with a free school meal, 34%. White British free school meal, 28%. So there's very large ethnic differences between groups of kids and what GCSE grades are. Free school meal is a proxy, something used instead of social class. So clearly the white British free school meal kids are going to be working class. That's an example. So it's definitely going on. However, the first however here is when you look at stats for kids going to university, way more of these groups down here, Pakistani, that sort of thing, way more of these kids go to university than the white British kids. So although their grades aren't as good, the ones that do pass, many more of them go on to university as a percentage. Now why is this? Well, some people say, well, it's material factors, poverty. A lot of these groups here, towards the bottom, their parents, their families are poor. So bad housing, overcrowded, all the things we've done before to do with material deprivation and uh, educational attainment. You can look at a previous lesson for that. Uh, living in one is overcrowded flats, cold, damp, you know, one flat family of, you know, eight, nine, ten people. So it could be that. So it could really be it's about social class rather than ethnicity. So people in these flats, it's not that they're Bengali, it's that they're working class. However, Tower Hamlets in East London has a, has a really high proportion of Bengali people living there, living in flats like this, and their GCC results, those kids' results have been going up a lot in the last few years. So it's not a straightforward, definitely, it's social class, definitely it's being poor. Because some kids are poor, and these poor ethnic minorities, and they're starting to do very well indeed at their GCSEs. So other people say, no, you know what, it could be home language. If you look at some of these groups here, their parents don't speak English. And it could be that that is what's holding them back at school. Like their parents can't read to them when they're kids in English. They don't speak English. So, and that probably is a factor. Again, however, if you go to certain areas where parents don't speak English, this is a photograph from, in fact, Tower Hamlets, Again, kids with parents who don't speak English, can't read and write English, are starting to do very well indeed at GCSE. So although it's correlated and it might be a factor, it's not causal. Parental aspirations, meaning really the ethnic subculture which you're from. If your parents are really massively into education, 
and will push you very, very hard at it. You will do well. A lot of sociologists like this idea. So in Southeast Asia, they call the idea tiger mum, who when, you, when a Chinese kid gets home from school, mum's got four or five hours work of work planned out for that child in the evenings. Because they're in their, in their culture, you get a very high status for educational success. Therefore, the values and the norms reflect that compared to other ethnic groups like British working class who don't value education so highly. So there's lots of factors here and we'll look at some more in the next lesson. And we'll do this in the, in the lesson. Why is it impossible to definitely state which of the above factors is the most important? You've got to start thinking about this. In social sciences, the problem is you can't separate the different factors. They intersect. Yeah? And that's why you can't really measure them precisely. 